So in this example, we're going to use MATLAB FFTs to perform linear convolution. MATLAB has a built-in convolution function called conv, but typically for long signals, doing convolution in the frequency domain by doing multiplication is typically the way one would do that. So let's just walk through this example. We're going to work with some relatively short signals, so the uh, speed part of why you do this isn't really relevant here, but we'll at least walk through the algorithm to know how to pad things appropriately to do linear convolution with FFTs. So here are the two signals we're going to work with. One is the signal F, and it's a signal that is zero for all time, except it starts ramping up at time zero. And then the signal G, it looks like this, and we can plot what these look like using the uh, figure and the subplot, and we get something that looks like this. So here's the signal F of K as a function of time k, and here is the signal g of k as a function of time k, discrete time signals. And their lengths are very different. f of k only has seven total values defined here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to 6, whereas g of k has a length of 12. Often what you'll do in MATLAB is you'll just use the com function to do convolution, and if you do that, MATLAB will return the answer. Here's the answer, and we can plot what that answer is. So MATLAB says, using the convolution function, that this is the convolution of the signals f and g to create the signal y. So this is what you get if you just use conv in MATLAB. But we're, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use or perform convolution in the frequency domain by multiplying. If you want this to actually return linear convolution, you have to pad your signals appropriately. Otherwise, you'll end up with circular convolution. So what we're going to do is first we're going to compute the length of each of the signals that we're dealing with. So f is of length 7, and g is of length 12, so I'm calling those n1 and n2. And now we're going to pad f with n2 minus 1 zeros. So we're going to tap on 11 zeros to f. So this has now a length 18. And for g, we're going to tack on n1 minus 1 zeros. So that'd be 7 minus 1 is 6. We're going to tack on 6 zeros. So now I have f pad and g pad, they are both length 18. So we've gotten them to this common size. Using the MATLAB FFT command, I can go into the frequency domain. So now this is my signal in the frequency domain, f and g. And in the frequency domain, convolution is equivalent to multiplication. So if I want to do convolution, I multiply. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing an element-wise multiplication with f and g to get y in the frequency domain. And then I can use the IFFT to go from the frequency domain back to the time domain. So at this point, I have a signal that I call Y mine, because I've created it myself, that I think should be equivalent to the one that we did up here called Y MATLAB. And if you look at this and plot it, you can see that it is. Here is linear convolution using FFTs, whereas linear convolution using the MATLAB COM function looked like this. So if you toggle between those, you can convince yourself they are indeed the same. There are some precision issues here, obviously. Why mine is going to look a little bit different in terms of it's not decimals, it's floating points. So instead of 1, it's 1 1.0000000. But our goal here was essentially accomplished by uh, padding everything and getting out a signal that is machine precision away from what we wanted. So I can do that subtraction, actually, by MATLAB. And the difference yeah, is down in the uh, you know, 1e negative 14 range. So as the example we wanted to walk through, and the key thing is just making sure that you pad your signals with appropriate length zeros to get them to a common size in the time domain, and then go into the FFT domain and do the multiplication.